Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way, where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this series, we're going to be starting a brand new picture and we're going to do an old Spanish mission at night in the snow. Uh, it'll also have stars and I'll show you how to be able to paint um, the stars and also the uh, moon or a star, depending on what you will want in this one. And here are some of the brushes that I use when I'm uh, painting traditionally, and you can either use acrylic or oil. Um, I use canvas board when I'm painting traditionally. Um, some people prefer stretch canvas. It just depends on what you want. And I also use Grumbacher Academy acrylic paint colors. And so here's the list of colors that I use. Now keep in mind, if you use different brands, the names are going to be a little bit more different. Um, Liquitex, I also use Liquitex. And the names are a little bit different in that uh, color line. So the app I'm going to be using is Infinite Painter for Android. And it has just, um, Infinite Painter has just released their new uh, version and so they have a brand new interface and you can go ahead and see how you pick your canvas size and your paper and things like that and this is the start screen and you can uh, go ahead and and see what you the size that you want and you can also uh, pick the paper color texture things like that. It's really nice what um, the developer, um, Sean Brakefield, has done. He's gotten it really nice now and, and added a, a really nice user interface. And then here I'm picking the texture for the paper. Um, you can pick it after you've picked the size and you can get it from the layers palette. And then here I'm trying to um, add some of my photo references and I kind of want that basic shape right there and then I want a little bit of some of the shape from one of these other pictures and I've got, got all these off of Pixabay and <clears throat> Wikimedia Commons and I'm just going to kind of combine these together to make exactly the picture that I want so I'm just working here on uh, trying to get uh, a basic sketch and so I'm doing uh, just a, a little light pencil sketch and if you're following along traditionally you can use a little light pencil on your canvas board or you can use a charcoal pencil and since I'm doing kind of a basic landscape and the Building doesn't have to have a lot of details. I'm just kind of doing a basic sketch here. And this adobe church is just kind of square and it doesn't have a lot of hard details. You can just use um, lots of square shapes for it. And so that's what I'm doing here. Just trying to get the placement of where I want the building. I want to put a gate in front of it and I already did a little sketch so that I could see how I wanted it and I also wanted to see the bell tower <clears throat> from another um, sketch here another uh, photo reference from Pixabay and this is a an old mission that's actually fallen down but there's a wall in front of it and so I wanted to um, see what an adobe wall would look like. So that's my photo reference for an adobe wall. And <clears throat> so then I'm going to go ahead and just add that in the front of the picture, the adobe wall, to give it kind of a an eye stopper. And an eye stopper are objects and things that you put in the corner of your painting so that you can keep the viewer's eye engaged on your uh, painting <clears throat> and so I'm just uh, trying to kind of get the placement and then I'm going to go ahead and start with the night sky and 
um, I'm doing it on a second layer and infinite painter and just make sure that you have your sketch on the bottom just because you you need to to keep it separate so that you can um, not lose it and know where things are at because you might get off track with your painting if you paint over that so here I'm using some dark green some dark blues some dark reds like a uh, lizard and crimson if you're following along traditionally and phthalo blue if you're following along traditionally hooker's green and mixing those all together because we want a dark color but I don't want it to be pure black because pure black is pretty flat looking and so you don't want it to be that dark and then I'm adding a little tiny touch of white to it and you can do that um, with white acrylic gesso if you're following along with your acrylic paint and that's just to kind of opaque it and to give it a little bit more depth and variation so that it doesn't look so flat and then I want to go ahead and add the inky spray an infinite painter and um, that gives you the look of the stars and if you're following along traditionally take an old toothbrush and add some water to some white acrylic gesso with a touch of cadmium yellow light and just spatter it on your painting and since you're beginning it doesn't matter where whether you spatter the stars on some of your buildings or something like that because it's just a sketch and so once you get the stars looking um, like you want them then go ahead and add the background mountains and so they're going to be kind of light in the background so I would use I use um, ultramarine blue with my traditional paints and so you want to get and maybe a touch of dioxazine purple you just want a really kind of a light blue background and then since this is winter time and it's snow you want to go ahead and add a little bit of a lighter blue and that will um, give it a look that there's snow on the mountains but don't kill all your dark color um, go ahead and pick where you're going to have your light source sort of and just go ahead and add the light um, from from the stars or the moon and then this picture I made it the Christmas star this was actually my Christmas card for this year but you can also just add the moon if you want to make this just a winter scene instead of a Christmas scene and then you want to go ahead and add the middle ground which will be the land that uh, is in front of the mountains and so it'll be kind of flat as it comes forward and you you still want to give it kind of a, a grayish color grayish blue and you can use ultramarine blue with a touch of burnt sienna if you're following traditionally and that will make it a, a grayish color and then you can add white to that <clears throat> and maybe some more blue and go ahead and give that kind of a snow snowy look and leave some of the pockets of dark and light there because that gives it the look of snow um, because snow will be drifted up in in nooks and crannies on the ground and so you want to go ahead and, and give that kind of an uneven look and then <clears throat> go ahead and start your um, mission and if you're doing this digitally put it on another layer so that you don't mess up your background or your stars if you have to go back and change those and if you're doing that traditionally just try not to mess up <laughs> but if you do then you'll have to go back and sort of patch it up and as you can see I'm kind of having a little bit of trouble getting the shape of the building so it would be best if you took a charcoal or a white piece of chalk and sketch that out pretty good first and then add the paint if you're doing this traditionally digitally it's easy to fix traditionally not so much so 
try to get the sketch done correctly if you're doing this traditionally first before you add the paint to the building and so I'm using kind of a burnt umber mixture here if you're following along traditionally with um, a little bit of some white acrylic gesso thrown in it maybe a touch of dioxazine purple we want to get that kind of under that dark um, brick look that's under the adobe buildings and here i'm working on the top of the mission and it has a bell tower in it so i'm trying to get that little um, part square and an infinite painter they have a lot of guides and you can use uh, the ruler guides and straight line guides and so I'm, I'm using that and it also has uh, some curves that you can use and I really like the curves option here and that helps me get that correctly on the mission tower <clears throat> if you're doing this traditionally um, find a plate or a, a bottle cap or something that that will make kind of a round top there and then here I'm just um, working on the sides, trying to get them straight as well. And then I wanted to put a little lean-to shed on it. Like maybe that's the extra room, maybe that's storage, maybe that's where somebody lives that takes care of the church. Or maybe it's where the priest lives that takes care of the church. So I wanted to go ahead and add that little room on the side there. You can actually see it in the original photo. So <clears throat> I just wanted to go ahead and get that in there because it adds interest and it just gives it a nice <clears throat> touch to your painting to to um, have a little house there, the, the priest's quarters. And so then I'm leaving a little bit of some space for the doors. It's going to have wooden doors, and I'm using the ruler tool or the straight line tool and infinite painter to get the edges of the building straight and the doors. And if you're following along traditionally, use a little ruler. That will help you, or a T-square. And then <clears throat> here I'm painting the snow around uh, the building there, and you notice there's the, going to be a little space where the room in the back, it's not right on the end there so you want to push it back a little bit so this is the end of part one of my snow emission series and in part two we're going to work more on the building and work more on adding the snow and so if you want to see that stick around and hit the subscribe button if you have any questions or comments just leave them in the comments down below and i will catch you later